this is an interesting theory, which I, I, I that you know the computer is elsewhere, and then the universe is here, just this manifestation. But there's another possibility, which is just what we see is what we get. That the universe is itself the thing that's computing, and this computation is not taking place elsewhere. But you know, every time you know two electrons bounce off of each other, bits are flipping. Every you know every quark, every photon can be described by a certain number of bits, and then. We know every time something happens, they flip. And you can actually do a, a calculation to find out how many bits and how many ops, you know, how many bit flips are necessary to simulate the universe, as in the matrix. And what you find is that the laws of general relativity then say the system that is going to simulate the universe can be no smaller than the universe itself. Because the universe itself is already at the point where it contains the maximum possible number of bits and is flipping them as rapidly as it possibly can. So this actually gives another resolution to your question that is, well, you know, you can imagine simulating a little eensy weensy piece of the universe on a computer, but if you're going to simulate the whole thing in matrix-like fashion, and I was a consultant for the movie The Physics of the Matrix. <laughs> uh, Which uh, can either be a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, yeah I don't know. If you <laughs> saw the second and third one. But. So then, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. Right, right, yeah. Right. This is uh, yeah. We're talking about we're talking about scrambling and garbage being created. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Anyway, so <laughs> entropy, entropy, <laughs> entropy, entropy, entropy increases. So and actually, this entropy increasing is really this computation going on, and the universe is computing lickety split as fast as it can. And we couldn't simulate the universe without anything that was the size of the universe itself. So but it's then, actually but, not possible. But it, okay, so if the computer that specifies the universe has to be the size of the universe, aren't you just sort of saying? The universe is the universe. Well, I was saying it was a computer, but uh, you you're, to... you're agreeing with me. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Please. so explain. Well, um, I'm, I'm also describing the universe as a computer pretty much the way that Seth was talking about, right? So, like when I was telling you before that when we interact, that means we're close, right? So then I can say when we interact, I put a one there in this connection that we have. And when we don't interact, I have a zero. And so now I have a bit of being close to you or not. And then I'm making, the, instead of having space evolving, I have these ones and zeros evolving. So for you, what's interesting about this hypothesis is not whether it defines the beginning or the end of the universe, but that the information helps us to understand better the, the, the medium in which the universe is right now. So to be honest, what's interesting to me is something very practical, which is that Computers are important, quantum computers are important, people are doing a lot of research in quantum computers, and so they have a lot of understanding that I can import to solve physics problems. Um, so, at the end of the day, I do feel that it's, you know, it's a guy's question. We live in a time where we understand the world in terms of computers, and I think of the wor I describe the world in terms of computers, like what you were saying before, if I lived at a different time, the, world, the universe might be a big clock. So now it's a big computer, which is a good thing to do because I can use all those tools that the computer scientists have. There are also some things that are obviously different. For example, the universe doesn't crash. And, but that's actually Not an interesting yet. thing to understand. What is special about the universe that doesn't crash, which in our work translates into why is the universe smooth and homogeneous and at relatively low entropy and so on. 